We are now going to start our lunchtime address with Sebastian Lebel Grenier. Thank you very much for being here. Celine will introduce him. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the food. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Celine Cooper, and I am the managing director of the Consortium of English Language, CEGEPS Colleges and Universities of Quebec. Um, and I'm also the co-chair of this forum with my colleague, Anna Hunt. Uh, I have the great honor of introducing our next speaker, Sébastien Lebel Grenier, Principal and Vice Chancellor of Bishops University. And uh, we're very fortunate to have him with us today to speak about a very critical and timely issue, the impact of Quebec's new university tuition funding reform. Sébastien Lebel Grenier uh, was officially installed as Principal of Bishops University on September 22nd. Less than a month later, <laughs> on Friday, October the 13th, the government announced their intention to significantly increase the tuition fees paid by non-Quebec students studying at all universities. As we know, Quebec's three English universities, McGill, Concordia, and Bishops, will be hardest hit by these measures since they receive significantly higher numbers of out-of-province and international students than Francophone universities. For Bishops University, an institution with less than 3,000 students and around 30% of students from other Canadian provinces, the situation is dire. These measures threaten not only the finances and identity of bishops, but the very existence of the institution itself. Uh, needless to say, Principal Lebel Grenier is a very busy man these days, uh, and we're very grateful for your presence with us today. Le Professeur Lebel Grenier est originaire de Manicouagan, dans le nord du Québec, et a vécu dans plusieurs régions de la province, à Ottawa et en France. Il est titulaire d'une licence de droit civil et d'un baccalauréat en common law de l'Université d'Ottawa, d'un diplôme d'études approfondies de l'Université ex marseille 3 et d'un doctorat en droit de l'Université McGill. Il a débuté sa carrière comme avocat en pratique privée au bureau de Montréal de cabinet Steichman Elliott. Il est ensuite devenu professeur de droit public à la Faculté de droit de l'Université de Sherbrooke, où il a été directeur du programme du Common Law et de droit transnational, vice-doyen à la recherche et aux études supérieures et doyen de la faculté. À l'Université de Sherbrooke, le professeur Lebel Grenier a été un acteur incontournable du développement de l'innovation, de l'essor, de la philanthropie, de l'accroissement du rayonnement et de la reconnaissance de la Faculté de droit à l'échelle provinciale et nationale. Il est membre fondateur du Centre de recherche Société, droit et religion de l'Université de Sherbrooke, un centre de recherche interdisciplinaire qui explore les rapports qu'entretiennent la religion, la culture et le droit. So please join me in welcoming Principal Lebel Grenier of Bishops University to the podium. Thank you very much, Celine, and um, that was much too long. So uh, thank you for uh, for you know having me talk with you today. Uh, it's really important. We're uh, in a situation where we're facing a uh, really an existential crisis for Bishops University. So I thought I'd our time is going to be short. I thought I'd give you a bit more info on that, uh, also on the impact that these measures have had on all English language institutions and on the reputation of Quebec, both internally and externally. Um, and uh, perhaps at the end, if we can keep a, a bit of time, we can uh, uh, discuss these implications. So uh, focusing on Bishops University, um, we're in a pretty, uh, this, these measures really are putting us in a very difficult position. Uh, first off, what I want to say is that uh, we stand in solidarity with Concordia and McGill. We think that these measures are just bad for Quebec. Uh, they will drive uh, students from other Canadian provinces away from Quebec, um, and they will uh, be very destructive on the reputation of Quebec. Oops, sorry. Um, they're going to be very destructive on the reputation of Quebec externally, elsewhere in Canada. We're starting to find out it's going to be destructive as well on the reputation of Quebec internationally, so we're um, getting more and more queries from students from other countries 
uh, who are not specifically affected by the measures relevant to the uh, Canadian out-of-province students, we're seeing that these candidates are also afraid of the implications for their stay in Quebec as students. And certainly as regards the internal community, so the Quebecers that are uh, living in Quebec right now, it's a very discouraging message. So the message is, uh, well, you know, you guys will tolerate you, but we, you shouldn't be taking up too much space. So your institutions, your universities should not be too big or successful, and uh, we should be wary of strengthening uh, your institutions by allowing uh, outsiders to come into the province. So that's kind of the message that's been received. Anyways, it's a message that's been expressed by members of the bishops community. They're very concerned about what this policy means in terms of uh, relations and, and the place that's left for uh, our community. As regards bishops specifically, so uh, the measure that's really hitting us hardest is the one for Canadian out-of-province students. So the Canadian out-of-province students represent roughly 30% of our students. Over the past 10 years, it's been 29%. So roughly 30% of our students. It's the highest percentage in Quebec. Uh, and it's, a, uh, it, it's in continuity with our history. So Bishops is celebrating its 180th anniversary this year. Uh, very proud about that. Uh, we've been there from the get-go in the Eastern Townships, and we're really a founding member of what has become the Eastern Townships community, a very diverse and open community. Um, and uh, so we've always had out-of-province students come to our institution, and that's always been part of our identity as an institution. So we feel that what makes Bishop special is the fact that we've got a very diverse student body that comes to campus and stays on campus. So over 90% of our first year students stay in residence. They are together all the time. They build understanding between communities, between people from different backgrounds, and they open up their minds so and their hearts to other realities. And I think that this inclusive, diverse community is really core to our identity as an institution. So if we were to lose our Canadian out-of-province students, that would mean that basically Bishops is not the same university. You know, let alone if we survive financially, um, Bishops would not be the same institution. So for us, when I say it's existential, it's on both levels. It's existential in a financial sense, Universities operate on paper thin margins. I don't know of a university that can, can lose a quarter of its budget and survive. Uh, so we're extremely concerned in that respect, um, but we're extremely concerned as to what university will survive. Okay, so this is really uh, our identity that's at stake here. Um, so our community is also uh, very much concerned uh, that this has been framed as a language issue. Um, no one in the Eastern Townships is claiming that the presence of bishops and the more or less 800 Canadian out-of-province students is endangering the French language. Really, but it's got to be said. I mean, somewhere, uh, unfortunately, some people in government do not understand this reality. So we've got to repeat it. Um, Actually, what we're seeing is a slow decline of the Anglophone community in the Eastern Townships. And just uh, looking at the borough of Lennoxville, where we're located, um, the Anglophones now represent 44.5% of the population. They were majority in 2002. And this has been a long and steady decline. We're concerned about the vitality of the Anglophone populations, especially in the regions of Quebec. And Bishops traditionally has been an essential institution, especially for the Anglophone communities that come from all over the regions of Quebec, because we're a smaller university, it's a more uh, flexible, inclusive, safe space uh, for people that have grown up in small communities and want to then proceed on to university. Of course, we can't survive with only the uh, Anglophone population from uh, the regions of Quebec. There's not enough left, you know, if we can be blunt here. Um, and we need to create a community that's thriving where there is a sufficient number of Anglophones. So that also plays into uh, the identity aspect. Um, so this, these measures have been met with a lot of disbelief um, 
people don't understand what's going on. They don't understand why they're being attacked and why the institutions of the Anglophone community and institutions that have been there and that have been relevant for 180 years are being attacked. So there is a lot of incredulity you know, with, with these measures. Um, and thankfully, people are standing. So you might have seen in the news, we um, actually the community came together and mobilized community leaders from throughout the Eastern Townships uh, and organized a huge event on Tuesday at Bishops. So uh, it was held as a the centennial. Um, we had uh, about 100 community leaders that came in on a few days notice to stand on stage. We had five people speaking as to uh, the view of the community, basically saying that these measures are unwarranted and that they do not stand for them, uh, and they stand together with bishops. We had um, about a thousand people in attendance. So, you know, Centennial is 600 and something spa places. So we had an overflow room that was overflowing. Um, I don't remember seeing as many people uh, at bishops for an event like that. Um, and basically, and the community leaders that were there were. 80% of them were Francophones. And so they were there to stand in solidarity with us and say to say that this is unacceptable and that they were not, not going to stand by and watch um, government really attack an institution that is essential for all communities in the Eastern Townships. This uh, was followed by an open letter to the Premier and to the Minister, uh, Minister Derry. Um, and we've got over 180 signatories, all community leaders. This is not a petition. This is all community leaders uh, that have signed on to the letter with the same message. So the community is really mobilizing in the Eastern Townships, um, and they're saying loud and clear that uh, these institutions are essential to our common well-being as Quebecers. Uh, they provide value to every community in Quebec, and that um, pushing uh, measures that will be destructive for these institutions will not result in any benefit to Quebec. In fact, it's going to be negative for all sectors of society so that the, the measures are misguided. Um, I think that, uh, you know, what I would like to see, and I understand that the, the situation is more complex in Montreal, but what I would like to see is that the community, uh, to, to see the community rise up in Montreal as well. And I think that Francophone leaders have got to step up I think that all community leaders have got to step up. And if, if this, this is a defining moment, if it's important to us to make sure that our institutions stay strong and are thriving, we need to step up. This is really a defining moment. Um, it's essential. And if we have a weaker Concordia, if we have a weaker McGill, no one wins. It's not going to be a benefit to Quebec society. So that message has got to be um, it's got to be made loud and clear. And we've got as a community to make sure that it's, um, that it resonates in the house of power and that the government understands that these measures are misguided. Now, perhaps one last thing I want to say, um, I'm going to speak for bishops, but, uh, I've had so many discussions, uh, with, um, Graham Carr and Deep Saini, uh, and I think we're really on the same page here. Uh, we are not contesting um, the need to protect and promote the French language. Uh, we see ourselves as allies uh, to ensure that French is vibrant in our society. We just don't believe that it's in making English more fragile that we will achieve that objective. So we are not against um, policies that are aimed at ensuring the vitality of the French language. We just don't think that that can be accomplished by uh, making English, um, you know, weaker or, or under threat. Um, and so we've got to be very clear about that. It's not a, to us, it's not a language fight. Uh, we're not there. That's not what this is about. This is just misguided policies that will have a destructive impact on essential institutions, and that will be detrimental to Quebec as a whole. And that's what we're fighting against. Um, I don't know if you've got questions. I'm sorry, I'm trying to address all people in the room, but I just want to share with you, thank you, Christopher, for the because 
I'm a Bishop grad. I am very proud in the Bishop. <laughs> I had so many ages. I was a bishop in the 90s. As an Anglophone West Islander, I chose to go to the township from where did I live in Keener residence in the Pavillon Quebecois because there was an offer to bring people together to practice French. I met people from Australia, from Ontario, from British Columbia. My bog mate was from Saint Croix, and she was the Francophone who was going to help all of us in our French. And that was my experience day one on the campus and throughout. We were welcome at the Université de Sherbrooke. We used their library. We did research projects together. We, Bishops, has been not just a part of the Anglo community. It's a part of the Quebec society. And this is really a tragedy. And I'm, I'm happy that you're speaking up and that I hope our community does mobilize because it would be a shame for any of our institutions to be weakened or we're renowned as a province with very strong intellectual capital, and this is just not the direction to take Quebec to a better place. But thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you so much. And, and you know, if I can segue, um, you know that, that Canadians have come to Quebec to study um, are, if they're coming to undergraduate studies, are already making a choice to pay more. The national average in Canada for undergraduate studies is 7,500 per year. The uh, cost of tuition for um, out of province, Canadian out of province students right now stands at 9,000 per year, three times as much as the Quebec students. Um, so they're making a deliberate choice and um, the students we're seeing on campus are students that are curious, they wanna know more about Quebec. We're seeing quite a lot that want to gain better uh, French language fluency that have done immersion in the past. Um, these are incredible allies. These are the people you want to welcome to the province. A lot of them do stay on and then become incredibly productive members of, of the society. They bring forth other ideas and they vitalize our communities. And those that go back are incredible ambassadors uh, for Quebec. You know, God knows we need ambassadors. Um, you know, and and... Yeah, I just came back from a tour, a uh, Western tour. Thank God we've got uh, bishops grad, uh, grads out there that are really there to to be advocates for all the great things that Quebec society can be and, and the great things you know about our society. I mean, we're, we live in an incredible place. We could just not make it about dividing people. You know, one of the things about the, the, thing, the, the, the event that was held at bishops on Tuesday, um, which got me very emotional and got members of the community very emotional. Uh, the, the Francophone leaders who were there really uh, were there as well to make a declaration, declaration of love, you know, saying, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, you make our community what it is. You enrich our community. We want you here. You are welcome here. Um, and I think that's a message we need to hear as well. Uh, you know, we all belong here. Um, and and uh, we're all members of the of our society who make it prosper and grow. Stop this narrative that our institutions are the enemies of French. We are yeah. not. Yeah. We are absolutely committed to preserving and promoting French for all of our students, whether they're Anglophone, Francophone, Allophone. And this discourse needs to stop. As uh, Sebastian said, this is a defining moment, but the SAGEP and colleges are absolutely 100% behind you. Thank you, Sean. Well, you're going to be very busy this afternoon. So uh, thank you so much for, for allowing me to uh, take this time with you. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, we've got to keep strong. Um, I think the government is feeling the pressure. And uh, hopefully we can come to a resolution um, where common sense prevails. Thank you. Please join me uh, once again in uh, in thanking Principal Lebel Grenier. I've had the opportunity of working with uh, with you as part of the consortium. As again, he's a, he's the co-chair with John McMahon of the consortium of English language Sejeps colleges and universities. You are a tremendous leader, forged in fire. Uh, so thank you very much for coming to speak to us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.